granddad. Yo, Kapilega put. Living. Joya. straight it in a time Yeah. The name of Vijayna Gasa. Um, I come along with Alan Movie Watch Joka. That's for my mom's name. Um, so you know, in the hip hop culture, as an MC, you look for the coolest name, Elona Kama, that kind of speaks to who you are and uh, what you want to do. So it's basically Nishal Zazam. And Nakasa is the more interesting part. Um, there's a South African writer by the name of Net Nakasa, mm. whose story really it, it, it spoke to me because he was a guy who, you know, apartheid era, was born as a exile, you know, isolated from his hometown. And the depression of not being able to truly speak directly to his people um, made him kill himself. Okay. He free fell on top of a building. So for me, that was like a metaphor for how I felt back then and even still now. But sometimes this country has a way of pushing you to your limits and you feel foreign, even more up in many ways. So I felt like, yo, Vijay Nakasa had a ring to it, but it had La Message and Gomba as an MC. You want to be back for it, yeah? Okay, okay. So, yeah, most lyricist lounge, we're here talking about lyricism. Uh -huh. So, lyricism to you, what does it mean, Kua? In, in terms of your rap? Sure. Um, I've always looked at hip hop as as a as a as as something that branched two ways. There's there's the performative aspect and then there's the poetic aspect, you know. Mm -hmm. And you've always gotta have both, but depending on what you like, sometimes you're more poetry than performance, sometimes you're more uh, performance than poetry. Yeah. So for me lyricism is the group of individuals within rap, within the hip hop culture who focus on the poetics of the art form, whose pen game, whose messaging and whose, whose attention to the detail, yes, a skill, so rapper, is what comes first. Mm -hmm. And then the performance kind of delivers that. So for me, I identify my, myself as a lyricist because when I go into the studio, the first thing I'm thinking of is the message and the way to deliver the message, the way to, to bend language on its head and the senses are tricks, you know, the double entendres, <laughs> the bars, the metaphors. Yeah. And then also carry it across Ngendela is Okwazuba performable. Mm -hmm. So lyricism is a poet who is able to translate his poetry through performance. That's that's what it means to me. That's all, that's all. Yeah. So in terms of when are you writing, um, do, you, do you even remember your first verse when you started writing? When you thought about King Wundi, the Glewe? Yeah. I don't remember my first verse, uh, as in I can't recall it, but I do, I do probably remember what year it probably was. It must have been around about grade 7. Um, I'm not going to date myself, but I was going... I was part of a group of people who, back at that time, Mungani Hip Hop was taboo. Like, yeah. we, 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 we shit you omdu. Yeah. yeah. Can I curse? We, yeah, yeah, we, no, no. we omdu if we hip hop. Like, quite was the thing. And I remember at school events, we were the only cats, myself, Umzwanel, and now known as Rez a photographer. Uh, we loved hip hop so much, and we'd always, like, perform rap songs. And mm. then at some point, we just gravitated to us, you know, trying it ourselves. And that was the year that I can specifically remember realizing that that I came up with, mm. it creates the kind of responses that makes people feel empowered, feel entertained. I remember Uva Aguamiskele Primary School, I had to do a speech. Okay. And uh, after the speech, I mean, for me, I was a little kid. So, and whatnot, whatnot. But at the end of the speech, I, I tilted my head. And that's when I knew that there's something with the word. There's something with writing and there's something with being able to deliver your messages in literary form that for me I felt like Lubizolam it's my call. No, okay. Yeah. So Chubango, you can't even recite your first part. I can't even recite my <laughs> I don't even remember. It must have been like now it must have been it must have been incredibly whack. <laughs> oh, yeah, but yeah, but yeah. it must have been the kind of the, the whackness that you would respect. From I don't know, a, a, you know, a thirteen, fourteen year old kid. You know, <laughs> okay, so, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think um, I wanted to touch on uh, your body of work. You know? mm -hmm. We were talking about uh, off camera, but I would like you, Baban Bias, 
wayside uh, the makings of wayside and the fact that we as the guy out the people outside were like hey, not we like he <laughs> you you didn't put too much no my be out there yeah you know, but now you told me something that I didn't know what you went through going. yeah yeah um Growing up in Motherwell, which, which I feel was one of Port Elizabeth, Rebecca's um, hip hop hubs, Isaifa was always close. There was a lot of MCs that inspired me to rap and to do my thing. The Abandu is just, as a matter of fact, the whole GYU movement. A lot of people that know my background know that those are the guys that made me. And so eventually, dropping an album for me was something I felt like I had to do in a way that was very directed and very deliberate. Mm -hmm. I wanted to break in through what you would call the national scene. Mm -hmm. So it was around about this time where I, I came across homies of mine who were also trying to do their thing in the art space and we had formed a collective called the Livestock Creative Collective. Yes. And together it was photographers, it was graphic designers, it was producers, uh, it was rappers, you know, with myself being one of the musicians. And Wayside was a project that we, we created to kind of stamp our foot in in, in the gate, in the you know. Gate, yeah. So we really we dedicated ourselves to it. We went to the best studios, you know, that we could Abepai. We we mix and mastered it to a quality that we felt like could compete with what radio was putting out at that time. And mm. like I was saying, Gela Klesha, aka Ricky Rick and Casper were probably the mainstay rappers and that's mm. who I was targeting. I really wanted my music to speak to what was going on at that time, but also reflect on the the real social issues, you know, even mm -hmm. you know that, that threads the balance between dancing and being able to enjoy yourself as a human being, but also reflect on some of the things in this life, in this country that could change and thinking on those so that every individual feels responsible. So yeah, a lot of people feel like I slept on the project, but I went to Jersey for that project, you know, I, yeah. I knocked on label doors, I knocked on the, your native rhythms, I knocked on your motherlands, I, I, I met all of the biggest record executives of their time to kind of negotiate at the very most a deal from mm. that. I even got a heads up from you know one of South Africa's most respected MCs, you know, I, I emailed to me one day and he came back to me with like some real excitement about the project. Mm. If you watch this episode you might not remember. I was fucked up by that that moment <laughs> yeah. because I really felt like having recognition from cats you respected in the game um, solidified and affirmed to me by accent the ends are the way and the ends are at a serious level but after like going through the motions and encountering the politics of the industry I learned that at South Africa we have a crisis of gatekeeping you know yeah and we have a crisis of having a narrow market that doesn't cater to something broad enough that a lot of artists can can have a place in the industry so without really going into the kind of nitty gritties of that I worked my ass off <laughs> and with the team club project and after that I won't lie quite care for a certain level of ambition and okay. after that I decided to do rap solely as a hobby because I wanted to protect how sacred it was to me you know mm -hmm. rapping to me is like therapy Yes. It's a, a nai couch and it's a mogola with Freud or whatnot. Mm. Um, I have the lyricism. So when I, whenever I'm feeling fucked up, whenever I feel like the world, the socio-economic climate, the psychological uh, tension of my life is coming to its peak, the balegela, kuirab, the puluka, the kama, all of my emotions into raw, unadulterated like lyrics you know so mm. that's where I've been from 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 that moment till now where I'm a rapper by default because I love the art form but to consciously try and become some kind of industry phenomenon is something that I, I, I abandoned you know because mm -hmm. EA figure and stresses are you that you don't always want to feel like you're chasing something beyond you sometimes you just want to feel like you have your art and it always allows you to breathe and whether if we are going to is up to the forces of destiny and time, you know. So I've kind of I've, I've, I've adopted that attitude when it comes to my art. I, I, I occasionally go in studios, I make music, 
and I put it out there. But as for who consumes it, and for what comes of the videos, what comes of the music, only time will tell. Okay, okay. Yeah. I understand now. Uh, <laughs> no, no <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. anybody who Googles VJ Nakasa will see the track record. Yeah. Um, it speaks for itself. I made sure, the team made sure uh, that he presents, you know, the, you know, nowadays there's what they call an online presence. Online presence. The yes. online presence, yeah, I'm in the call. So mm. if people want to find the music, if people want to kind of have a footprint of who this guy is, why he does his art, and how far it's taken him, mm. I'm, 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 I'm in there, I'm in the algorithms. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I have money algorithms. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, in terms of uh, going back to Glenn Lyricism, uh, we always have this thing about Utwa Wundu. He's a rapper and this one is an MC. Mm. What, what would you differentiate between a rapper and an MC? As you see yourself as an MC or do you see yourself as a rapper? Uh, like I said initially, for me, hip hop is part poetry, part performance. So, as I, as I, as I labels, I don't really subscribe to them strongly because yeah. I, do, I do believe that every rapper is to a certain extent an MC. It just depends on what aspect of the craft, like I said in the beginning, they focus on. And mm. We have a tendency of labeling those who focus on the poetry as MCs, masters of the ceremony, mm. those who know how to master the crowd. And we have a tendency of labeling those who focus on the performance as rappers or vice versa. You know? yeah. So it's always that kind of confusion. So for me, I'm an MC. You know? I, I, I know how to master a crowd. I've worked at that. I've worked at bringing a presence. Yeah, in, in, in a public space and working on how I can translate Untulo Am and, and any message Yam in a way that the audience can feel moved by it and still dance. And at the very same time, I've worked on the private experience. If Untulo Am many earphones are and they, they want to just zone out to some kind of music, that's what I'm doing. So I do feel like whatever you feel like you label yourself, rapper, MC, you can't say you one without saying you're the other. Because okay. if you say you're a rapper, aren't you an MC? If you yeah. say you're an MC, aren't you a rapper? These, these are all facets. You can't leave one facet, you know, and, and, and take the other. It's holistic to me. Yeah, okay. Uh, there's something uh, that's... Uh, I don't know, I think this time around, there's always been a debate about it, but I knew that these days because of this trap uh, and trap versus boom bap. But I want I want your own opinion when it comes to freestyles because you get your older heads were like for them freestyling is solely off the dome. Now you yeah. get the new kids were like no man, freestyling. I uh, know it, it's something that you wrote but you you didn't you, you didn't perform it it's so uh, long and so that's why it's a freestyle. And anyway, people will always say but. If it's uh, something that you've wrote that is actually you actually took time to write, will actually transcribe transcribe card sure. on uh. on tape or on video instead of about something that's top of of top of the dome. So mm. we have this land by if freestyle, like on your land by what is a freestyle guy? Um, if if I was to to go in front of a new audience. There's always rhymes that I know that people haven't heard. Yeah. So for me, a freestyle is that by definition. You, you spit something that you know the audience is going to engage with for the first time. It's free in yes. that sense. It's not part of your catalog. Yes. It's not part of the things that people can go and consume on, a ba on, on like a regular basis. Yes. It's a freestyle because it's an exclusive experience. Whether on that spot, Uvumba, Uvumbulula, Indo, that was a script, or you go top of the dome, could, can anybody tell the difference if you didn't tell them? That's yes. one question, yes. that you're going on top of the dome. And also, does it matter? Does it matter if an MC is writing or not, if at the end of the day, they're nice? Mm. So I feel like we're asking the wrong question of a freestyle. The fundamental thing is, have we heard this before? If we haven't, it's a freestyle. Whether they wrote it or they didn't, 
it doesn't matter. But if they gave us some style for free, something exclusive that only we got in that moment, and we can treasure sing up in the sea in a disc or in on a streaming site, mm -hmm. then that's a freestyle. And if you even if you go back to the actual formal definition of freestyle, the elders started out saying a freestyle is is a is a free written script without any concept in mind. Yeah. So rap about yourself as an MC, being posterous, being I'm the shit. It's 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 you know it's what they call fantasy empowerment, you know, yeah. empowerment fantasy that u build away na in the confidence yako by talking about yourself in these outrageous ways to to show people you're a myth, you're magic, you're a legend. So yeah that's freestyle for me. It has to be a verse that is free for the people. Your style comes for free in the sense that this is not something that the people can trace back to something they can that can be sold to them. Yeah. So that's my definition of freestyle. Doesn't matter if you palile or palanga because at the end of the day, Anzo ya zim ni top of the dome yako. Some yeah. niggas, some niggas front like they be talking, they be <laughs> yeah. going off top when they know they just they go have a good memory. Yeah, you know, and you know, only some people can tell. But at the end of the day, that doesn't matter. It's like it's about the skill, it's about the craft. As long as it's something exclusive. As long as it's something exclusive, and as long as you give people an experience that they felt like only you had to be there to hear it, or yeah. you had to watch it to feel it. So that's my definition of freestyle. Now I feel like now I feel like the <laughs> last question is will actually dwell on what you just said because okay the last question was i i had in mind was what opinion do you have that is contrary to popular belief sure yeah is always on some i have a this. lot i have a lot of those but what is that one i when it know, comes to hip-hop okay when it comes to hip-hop I'll say this because for the purposes of the format of the show, it's an important opinion. I don't believe there's any such thing as whackness. I think when we say somebody's whack, what we mean is, I don't like them. Okay. Uh, so, when you, when it, your particular tastes, if you're looking for, 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 for something that makes you want to dance, for simplistic lyrics that are repetitive, because there's, there's, there's a level of skill that comes with being simple, just mm. like there's a level of skill that comes with being complex. So I feel sometimes we label certain things whack as, as an expression of our own preference. And I think the word whackness is thrown around a lot in <laughs> yeah. hip-hop as some kind of absolute standard of yeah. And let's stop that, because at the end of the day, And if you understand what that person is trying to do, and you know how to appreciate it, was I understand about work when you place them on the standard of what you like. But when you see what they're trying to do, if you understand what Ifani is trying to do as an artist, mm -hmm. you'll understand he's dope at what he does. But if you try and bring Ifani to a lyricist definition of what you consider excellence, of course he's not going to meet the, the standard. standard. So I feel like Hip hop culture needs to embrace. You know, one of my favorite rappers, who's subconscious, has a song called "Shades of Excellence," yes. where he says there's mad different shades of excellence. So there's stage presence, there's there's lyricism. So we can't measure people by one shade of excellence. Somebody doesn't have to be nice poetically, but they can have a nice voice. They can have projection. They can have performance. And a core rapper that I've ever met who's seriously been doing it for a long time and dedicated themselves to the craft that you can't look at and if you take the moment to like ubu yemva in your own opinion and see what that person is actually trying to do for themselves ujongi market yabu this person is not work they're not my cup of tea yeah but they're not work at all everybody's doing their thing nobody's work and if we want to compete we need to look at what spaces we're doing it in. So for me, that's probably my most controversial opinion. There's no such thing as whackness. Hey, <laughs> So I want back for my nephew, who VJ Nakasa and your tracks and all your... Yeah, um, so it's VJ Nakasa on all streaming sites. And a lot of people normally get this wrong. The V, it's V dot J. The VJ isn't one. Oh yeah. Word because again it's my initials, so it's V dot J space Nagasa, 
and if you click that online you'll find me on twitter on twitter it's at vj uh one word uh on instagram it's it's vj nakasa on facebook movie with joker so yes yes my people that's me that's what i'm doing i'll be out there Except Oh Lyricist Lounge Okay Oh, that's what we're working with? Alright It's me uh, I'm the shit manua manier Nia manu manua Manu fuku manuva with ears Maneuver my youth money highs I mind die dang dong Joe Nina Simone strong Beef in a bomb King of the Kong Gorilla than the heaviest ape Scary escape deep in the wrongs Cut like Mela Through all the melanin 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 Fair Gucci fellas Pull yourself together cause you're sign up man Who took a man? Who's Paka man? A black label king of the cost Like Galileo Galileo's telescopes Couldn't see this SC slang Yes he She's so cool he's Yes he SC MC She's a sexy loose Sizzy Loose Easy The way that I break it down all day BJ Nagasa you know that I come all way like I'm a piano beat Hovon and Bach Bamba sweets golden in Chauvinin Pate Gate keep open like Wam Papa Dream Stoughton Wam Poopa Wam Fonda like Fede Poco All sing I very wap Men in star P in my jeans like Denim Sani Sneani Spani Wap Blue Kala Boo Kalanga marching through Spit that Uma Zoom Boo Set Dog Chevelez and Spit that I'm Arjun Boo Except Come here Mayor Come here Gang Lani Come get your Mayor And may I say a little prayer for in size and I'm a Khum Shani Zopaya Niggas still trapped in the rainbow with a halo that my diva used to wear But we kinda died at an angle 360 degrees facing the east of the equator My boss on our boss on my side God, what dope album falling by the wayside DJ Nagasa carrying the game One man, Kune in his line Gold catcher, Fule in his prime No practice, uh I flow like meds I met seas with a short end For every uncertain beginning a short end Take the boots and let the pairs go moon years Pairs go moon yeah like a high rocky I rock in that rally proud energy Pop energy Like a dwarf rocky soon in the sword They single the sword Either castle still is the best Or me castle still in the streets Shit up your dome Bono rasa shit in the streets Fill up the domes like Mufasa Filling himself I'm killing these beats Ooh. Yeah 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 Spurs why? DJ Nakasa Lifestyle Creative Collective Kabeha One love Sure